What is up, Humanoid Nation? It's been a while. It's time to get back to some reactions. I've been working a lot on the pod lately, but time to get back to this stuff and sketches that I have in mind. Watch as I don't do a video on sketches in for five months. Uh, anyways, Ken Wrestling... Sorry, this video is by our boys from Walt Culture Wrestling. It is 10 wrestling segments that accidentally film things you weren't meant to see. I'm going to guess it's a lot from WCW, because there was a lot of tomfoolery going on in that company. All right, let's do this. Hello, my friends. It is Simon Miller here, and today's video is sponsored by Bosley. But Shout out to Simon Miller. I was going to say Bosley. Shout out to Bosley. No. Shout out to Simon Miller for going to Impact and being on a pay-per-view. Our boy is working his way up. More on that later. Producing wrestling is hard. Not only is it essentially a live movie with no retakes, but due to the nature of the beast, every single promotion at one time or another will want to do something over the top to wow the crowd. There is no way all of these were ever going to go to plan. So I am Simon for What Culture. Please do hit that subscribe button. And this is 10 wrestling segments that accidentally film things you weren't meant to see. Number 10, Stephanie McMahon's Neutron. Stephanie McMahon has really weird entrance music. I mean, some of the lyrics are, Style and grace, I'm never gonna be done. Lean on in, now welcome to the Queen Dom. This isn't exclusive to her either. When you listen to a lot of words from these songs, you go, What the hell was that? Things got really odd on the. I like her uh, music from 2000s. Too, like, oh god, how did it go when she was a SmackDown GM? Like, I'm all grown up. That one, yeah, that was a good one. Eh, really good. Really good. God, why do I have to hiccups? Now that I see Stephanie's body, I get the hiccups. Wow. Okay. January 2nd, 2017 Raw, though, when Stephanie walked out to confront Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho. They were moaning about then-GM Mick Foley, so I guess McMahon wanted to get in on this tirade. But when her theme hit, you didn't get her usual Titantron on the big screen. Nope. Instead, you saw someone logging in to their Facebook account. <laughs> Whoops. It was just bizarre all around, <laughs> oh because God. I don't know how you get those two things mixed up. But yeah. again, that's live TV for you. Number nine, the bottle that didn't know how to work. No, this isn't the, the name car? of my brand new kid storybook, but it's- Is it, that the Callisto one where he got thrown a bottle to his face? We'll find out next. It's about WWE wanting to get as much juice out of Chris Jericho and CM Punk as they could. They feuded through WrestleMania 28, and as Punk had won at the show of shows, Jericho needed to do something dastardly to get his heat back. So in theory, this was great. Because Chris decided to humiliate Punk by whipping his ass and pouring alcohol over his fallen body due to the fact that he was straight-edged. Before all that, Chris had even pitched that he should tattoo CM right in the middle of the ring, but that was a bit much so the booze would have to do. God it damn, was really? You wanted to tattoo the man in the middle of a ring i don't know which one's more stupid that or tommy dreamer actually wanted to die in the ring at wrestlemania for someone to shoot him god damn tommy what the fuck have been awesome as well if we hadn't have forgotten about physics because for one jericho slipped on the liquid and fell to the floor which kind of undermined things a bit and then when he went to get a bottle to smash over punk's head it broke too early Ruh -roh. the angle was still good but even jericho wrote in his autobiography this was quite embarrassing although i do get it i once whacked someone with some sugar glass during a wrestling match of my own and i had the opposite it didn't break at all forcing me to do it again yeah, i think it may it have happened. given the trick away to the audience number eight that creep you know it's sugar glass because if it looks like little pieces of crystal meth or some kind of drug if it doesn't look like it's gonna slice you up it's sugar glass man but who couldn't punch? Well, this caused quite punch. a storm, didn't it? Some people oh, even said it was the end of geez. AEW. But back in December 2019, after the Dark Order... Ugh. I don't like Evil Uno in AEW. He's such a goofball. No, no, oh, wait, wait. I just don't like his character on AEW. In the Independence, he's hilarious as hell. But... God damn on EW. Oh my god. <laughs> had rushed the ring to ruin the elite. We saw one of their minions laying in shots to one Dustin Rhodes. The problem was the camera zoomed right into this, and it was very clear that said individual was nowhere near his head and was actually just hitting the ground. Oh dear. Suspension of disbelief is so important in wrestling because otherwise you remember what you're watching isn't exactly on the money. And given how young all elite wrestling was, they didn't need this kind of reaction. I it really doesn't matter. It's the dark order. No one cares like when they first debuted nobody popped they're silent like just when the butcher and the blade showed up 
still stand by the fact this guy was just trying not to hurt Rhodes, but yeah, can't believe he was too impressed with it either. The man is the embodiment of professionalism in the modern day. I tell you though, I bet this never happened again, and next time whoever this was, just thump people right in the jaw. He would have got a hell of a lot less hate. Number 7. Mark Henry tries a different Olympic sport. I think this just sums up what an athletic freak Mark Henry is, because despite his size, that man can move. Even still, what he most definitely was not meant to do was catch up with the Nexus as Wade Barrett's group was oh, trying to escape yeah. from the arena. Hamling right in the middle of the factions run through the WWE where they had made plenty of enemies. They found Bruh, the Nexus was amazing up until SummerSlam. John Cena just killed her momentum. Nexus was on fire all the way up to SummerSlam and then it just went the f but the Nexus was awesome. ...themselves overwhelmed one night on Raw, so decided it wasn't worth it and legged it. They were chased off by some of our heroes, but when Henry got going, he picked up so much speed, he was right by their side. You could tell this wasn't the plan, as there was a deer in the headlights moment, forcing Heath Slater to push him away, so we didn't all go, well, why the hell didn't he just attack him? It is absurd, though, because this was 2010, when Mark was massive. It made no difference, though. If someone shouts, go... He gotta go. We interrupt this list to bring you an important Pause announcement. Me. Attention! Men I'm sorry about culture. Two I'm gonna have to skip through this. Just so, if you're American Pause surgical me. and thick with Bozard to weep, a more follicle have gone That's to Bosley. That's growing out the top is still at 200 for now. In the mirrors. Back to the video. Number 6, WCW botches the smoke and the mirrors. The Ultimate Warrior in WCW was not good. Mm. Despite it just not being the right time in 1998, the man behind the face paint just had so many daft ideas he wanted to include, and those in charge seemed to have no clue. <laughs> oh my god, this... Oh, do you see him, brother? Do you see him in the w mirror? It's the Ultimate Warrior, brother. Who are you talking about, Hulk? <laughs> This would have worked if, like, the goddamn commentators didn't see him too. It's like, oh, it's the Ultimate Warrior in the mirror, so. Eric Bischoff's the one that's crazy. <laughs> I don't know. It didn't make any sense. If they wanted to make Hulk Hogan crazy, yeah, Eric Bischoff couldn't see him, but the commentators should not see him as well. They go like, what's he looking at? What's he looking at? But no, they go like, it's the Ultimate Warrior! How to implement them properly. For some reason, Warrior was just supernatural now, which was also never explained. And this meant when he arrived in the ring, we saw a bunch of smoke, and then out of the fog came the once Jim Hellwig. Now, I don't know how much mist costs, but it must have been pricey, because on one Nitro, WCW didn't buy enough, meaning we all just saw the Warrior exiting the ring. Yep. yep. Seriously? I missed that part. <laughs> he seriously left the ring. Okay. Uh didn't mask him at all. It meant Bret Hart of all people had to act all shocked even though he had been looking at this What the f Oh my god <laughs> Oh my god Brad you tried to get you tried you tried No wonder you hated everything up don't see do <laughs> It's like where'd he go? Scott Steiner's clearly looking at him and so is Who the hell is this? Reese? Horace Hogan? The Giants clearly looking at him. <laughs> Brett's the only one selling it. Everyone else will... Oh my god, WCW. Happening, and amazingly, this isn't even the worst part of the Warrior Hogan feud. To sum it up, it was terrible. Number five, Hawk gets in the way. This one is so good, mostly because it's so innocent. We all know that Hawk from the Road Warriors was not only a monster, but also came across like a loon during his promos. You would never mess with him if you saw him for real, and he kept that aura up pretty much for his entire career. So when Vader was being interviewed ah, outside the locker yes. room and Hawk popped his head out before Whoopsie. realizing what he'd done and skulked back in, well, it was brilliant. Vader doesn't really know what's going on, but poor Hawk looks utterly disappointed in himself. And I'm sure this went down countless times over the years, but still, if you want to laugh from 1998, this will tick that box. Number four, WWE lets down Seth Rollins. Wait, Every wait, single wait, wait, person in the production truck is told up? that if a fan attacks a wrestler, oh, yes. don't film it. The last thing you want to do is give this idiot the spotlight they crave, so it's just best to act like nothing happened. This was not the case in 2021. Because as Seth Rollins was walking to the back after thumping Finn Balor, one of these morons did jump in from nowhere, and we saw most of it. Why the cameras lingered on the correct. brawl so long, I don't know, but it was genuinely nuts. Fair play to Seth, who played this off wonderfully when he arrived for the main event by looking out for more would-be attackers, but yeah, there should be some sort of pleb button that you smash whenever this goes down. Remember, this is not about you. Anytime a fan hits the ring, it's it's go time. Just get him. Get him!
Got him! What a, also, there's that fan that walked with Seth Rollins through the ring. And Seth Rollins just looking like, huh? Or what about that pay-per-view one about with the Wyatt family and Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns, and then all of a sudden that one fan just walks into the ring? That was weird. Number three, the Shockmaster. Oh, we yeah, all know this master. one, but if there's a chance to talk about it, I'm talking about it. And if you haven't seen it, my word, go and do it now. It was typical of WCW who went to the efforts of gimmicking a fake wall without finishing off the job. Meaning when the former tugboat was ready to debut as a Shockmaster, he smashed through this concrete and then tripped over a block that no one had bothered to get rid of. He did not stand a chance. To be fair, this was always gonna be a joke because for some reason, the real life Fred Ottman was wearing a sparkly Stormtrooper helmet, but the real icing on the cake is the reaction of Davy Boy Smith. He cannot hold it in at all and just shouts out that he fell on his arse. And when that he stupid helmet rolled arse. off the master's head, it was a disaster. It was the end of the character before it began and it was just classic WCW. Nobody else could have done this so badly. Number two, Sid ruins the illusion. Right, real talk. I love Sid just or Psycho Sid, whatever you want to call it. Vicious. There was just something about him that was so over the top and he entertained me. I mean, go and find the time Goldberg kept crushing his car at the end of night. Goldberg! <laughs> oh, that's classic. Pro, it is joyous. He was a rod for disaster, however, as this famous moment proved. Halfway through an interview with Jim Ross, Sid's mouth We're found live, him pal. as he couldn't say the word skeptics. He tried a few times before giving up and then asked the director if we could start again. The problem with this was, as JR told him, we're live. Live, pal, leaving Sid's eyes to light up like a Christmas tree as he realized what he'd done. It totally ruins the illusion of this being a man super angry with his opponent, but Sid still makes this work. His response was to shout that he could do whatever he wants, including restarting a live interview, I suppose. What a hero. Number one, Steve Austin, cowardly heel. Stone Cold Steve Austin never ran away from anyone. Even in 1996 and 1997, when he, he was, was still a, listed was as a, a bad guy, yeah. he would stand up to everyone, and this is one of the reasons he took off. Uh, yeah, he would stand up to everybody, except up until he joined the, the Alliance, Team WCW, ECW, and became a cowardly heel. That's something I never thought I'd see, like Steve Austin walking away from people. The rattlesnake was a badass. So when in the midst of the Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels feud, the camera caught Steve running away, well, oh. it was confusing. This wasn't meant to happen, of course, and the likely story- Oh, this is, I didn't watch this. Okay, okay, I, I know it, yeah. Or is Austin was meant to be nowhere near this, but as the Hitman and HBK ran through the backstage area, we did catch a glimpse of Stone Cold, who clocked what was happening and got out of Michaels' way. I mean, what on earth? Now, to be fair, this is a blink and you miss it moment, but when you see it, it is so obvious it was not meant to be broadcast. If it had been, the end result would have likely been been Austin dropping all of them on their behinds because that's all the audience ever wanted to see. Yeah. No, have any other you wrestling segments ass. that accidentally film things you weren't meant to see? Make sure you leave a comment below and don't forget to like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Then head over to whatculture.com where you can read articles like this and expand your wrestling brain. Make sure you come follow us on social media and we have other videos. Why don't you watch one and see if it? All right, Simon Miller are doing a good job at this. So yeah, WCW man has its ups and downs, but WWE. It's like they have their finger on the pulse, but some stuff does go through. And yeah, but at least it's not like WCW where it's constantly something like that. But yeah, Steve Austin running away, man. His character back in 96, 97. Doesn't fit him at all, but he was not supposed to be there. So yeah. Anyways, that's it for now. Humanoid Nation, Humanoid Freak Out. Bye. Pasito a pasito, suave, suavecito. Nos vamos pegando.